My name is Robert, as you can see, um, Jakic, depending on how you pronounce it. It can mean one of the two, either the hungry one or um, the selfish one. I use them interchangeably, depending on the situation, but I prefer the hungry one because I'm constantly eating, um, not just food, but eating a lot of data to process information. So if you call me Jakech, that means that's the correct pronunciation, the hungry one. If you call me Jakech, that means a selfish one. Um, a little bit about myself. I am originally from Uganda in East Africa, born, raised there. Ten years ago, made a conscious decision to move to a whole different country, uh, which is Australia. So my family and I live in Australia. We've been living there for the last 10 years. Um, moving to Australia has opened up my eyes to experience both sides of life. Um, life where you see you have to do something, um, living in adverse extreme poverty, um, and life of materialistic. So I have 10 years of living in to understand how both worlds can be different and yet the same because um, both of them actually have humans. Where there's humans, you just go through the same problems. Uh, I've been in the community um, since 2008, and at the time we had MIFOS, um, one of the very, very fast um, tech stack for what has now evolved into Apache Finrod. I've seen the progression and development and the scaling and where we are today since 2008 while I was still living in Uganda. And I've appreciated lots of things that have happened since then. So, and I'm also the CTO at FIDA. FIDA is a fintech solution is that we provide implementations and support on top of open source solution, um, which is pretty much FINRAD, Apache FINRAD. So this talk was meant to be for a different track altogether. Um, so I call it a beautiful accident because it gives me an opportunity to show some of you who, have, who might have not heard about um, Apache FINRAD, um, to perhaps maybe, you know, get a glimpse of what it is. Uh, it was supposed to be under FinTech, but accidentally lodged under API. So it's all good. Um, some of my hobbies, apart from spending time with the family and friends and drinking beers here and there, um, I love music. I am not absolutely technical at all. I cannot produce anything. I got into music by accident, and um, today um, I serve as executive producers for artists from Africa, and the, mess the, the lessons learned in music and fintech will form what I'm going to discuss, especially leveraging the power of AI. So when the AI thing started popping up here and there, it came at the right time because we were already thinking of how we can leverage either to make the team more efficient or to give back to the community. And I've, I've been in the thick of it, not as an expert, but um, a user, but also appreciator of the technology. And that's what we're going to discuss today. Um, so, of course... You know, no need to define what artificial intelligence is, but if you're just wondering, some of the key aspects and the key words would be, of course, intelligence and artificial, which doesn't, doesn't mean natural. But imagine the human brain is wired in a way that it can do trillions of things all at the same time, but artificially by using machines and stuff like that. So that's what artificial, artificial intelligence is which gives you the capability to think, process, translate, and do all bunch of complex things. And of course, the famous one we all know is the GPT, 
um, which powers the chat GPT in the um, open AI, which is, has been making a lot of waves. Um, but there are some other AI tools that you could use for you know, building models like TensorFlow, um, PyTorch, and, and a bunch of others. I'm not here to you know, evangelize any of them, but just to shed light and share experiences on um, the things that these things could help. Um, Apache Software Foundation definitely has a guidelines on uh, adoption of generative AI, which is, you know, something very, very important because everything needs to be in the confine of the, the guidelines. Um, implementing Finorad, Apache Finorad, and working with different clients across the globe has opened our eyes to a whole new thing. Um, when Mifos was, you know, being conceptualized, I think the movement was always financial inclusion. Since then, um, we, you know, Apache coming on to embrace Finorat, which is the core banking solution, a lot of things have evolved. Um, we interact with real life users from small to medium size to some big, big ones who are actually seriously looking into leveraging the power of open source for their core banking solutions. And each time we talk to them, you come out of such a meeting with two things. One, um, they can really make a lot of money with this, or they can really help humans. And we do have internal joke within um, FITA is that we are humans. It's actually one of our values. Um, we made a conscious decision that um, we need much as um, the world is tending towards materialistic things, we need that empathy to make sure that what we do also impacts humans. So the potential capabilities of AI hypothetically integrated into Finorad could help both worlds, but there's a whole other area that we, we can actually explore, which we do believe would be really, really great if integrated. Of course, within the confine of the guidelines of ASF. And therefore, I'm gonna run through a few use cases that potentially would be of high value. But FinRAD itself, as you know, is um, an open source tool that is, um, right now under Apache Software Foundation, and it's one of those many tools that you can use for your banking and financial services, from microfinances to new banks to commercial banks to you, whatever, name it, traditional finance, uh, financial institutions. Its use case is so broad that you can make it do anything you want, and that's why um, we do believe that integrating some of these tools would actually give it even a much, much more better benefits. So traditional banking, traditional finance, whatever you want to call it, the focus is always going to be on the customer. And the customer, are, if not mistaken, are human beings. These are people who are either coming to improve their standard of living through maybe savings or they're coming in to, you know, get financial services that they can, you know, improve their livelihood. Um, the problem with the traditional kind of banking, it was designed in a way that was not that flexible. Now with the rise of open source, um, we are seeing more and more conversations around how can we customize, how can we move faster, how can we incorporate some of the new things that are coming up in, in, to make sure there's business continuity. And we have seen, we have been in those discussions where we, we were part of, you know, to bring a solution on top of an open source. Um, the big players are appreciating the, the open source stack as well because they know it is the future. They know it's the, it's one of the things that's going to really make them scale. Uh, it's going to make them, you know, open up different avenues. Now with the coming of AI is even making it better because they're seeing impossibilities, you know, becoming possible. Um, there's also less restrict, you know, restrictions, you know, because of the community that is built around it. So all these are things that, um, are very helpful for our generation and also for the financial and fintech overall. 
With Finorad, um, the use cases range from payments to traditional banking um, or specific customizations that you can do. Um, we have seen integrations with different business cases like insurances. We have seen integrations with um, new banks, um, wallets that are built on top of Finorad. We have seen integrations with um, other third parties, ESB, and a bunch of other things. Um, and this is something that is very much needed because to go, the alternative is a closed loop. You don't want to go to closed loop. Um, and one of the things that we, we feel um, is, is really good is that each time we meet these players, we, we emphasize the fact that this is a community driven. It's not um, us coming to own anything. So um, along the process, we encourage them to make sure they know this is not something that is, you know, off the shelf. This is a community driven initiative. And therefore, even when they use it, they need to pay attention to that. So it's highly customizable. And we have um, use cases on payments, wallets, um, traditional banking, and, and a bunch of other things. So the potential, as I said at the beginning, for us to leverage AI is actually limitless. Um, you could look at it in a, in a sense of making it much bigger so that commercially it becomes really, really, really good. Or you could hone it into opportunity to impact uh, standard of living. And I consciously picked a few use cases, not more than four, that um, potential benefits to this open source core banking powered by Apache. And one of them is, again, choice of words, sensible, expansive credit scoring. So living in a country like Australia is, is, is far different from where I was brought up, Uganda. Um, a country like Australia, United States, Canada, you know, Germany, name it. Pretty much they have most of their things in order. If I want to get a credit check, I can just get it in a blink of an eyelid. When you go to a more developing or less developed countries like Uganda, Kenya, um, it's a little bit more complex. It's not just the banking as you define it, right? You know, it, the Western world would consider banking like I have a bank account, you know, trusting somebody in between there. Um, in, the, in less developed countries is the accessibility of, you know, the finances, the accessibility of um, what would bring them close to, you know, what we call the world economy. So they are always intuitive, you know, either it is completely cash economy or some sort of banking services, for example, like M-Pesa, the Kenyan M-Pesa or mobile money, you know, which is pretty much running on a two, you know, 2G phone. Um, it's running on SMS. It's running on USSD, you know. If you're lucky, some would have like apps, you know, real-time apps. Um, and that becomes a little bit complex when you start now bringing the idea of credit scoring. It's not going to work the same like in Canada, you know, where you have the institutions are all much, you know, there's more detail in technology and this understanding of all these integrations. So with the AI, the opportunity is there because you can reach more than just the organized banking system. You can, you can expand it to include other use cases, like, as I said, mobile money, new banks. Um, you know, like, for example, I do send money to support my family back home in Uganda, and I don't need to worry for them where they're going to get the money because I know there's an integration with an existing sort of a banking system in the name of mobile money. So my mom can just go to the nearest kiosk and withdraw the money. And yet, from where I am, I'm using an app to do that. Such kind of thing now is what I call expansive credit scoring. And for some of the customers that we work with, like um, in Africa especially, and some other developing countries, um, the source of their financial is not aggregated to the traditional finance. It's basically, you know, oh, at one point I can buy my grocery using mobile money. Uh, another one I'm using debit card, not even credit card. In some place I'm using cash. So 
if you are bootstrapping a fintech business, it's highly, highly impossible always to get an actual credit score of such a person. And we see an opportunity with um, AI to disrupt that area. The other one is, of course, um, fintech, as I mean, uh, Finorat, as we know it, is loans and transactions. Transactions could be part of the loans, can also be part of savings. Um, of course, there are other use cases depending on how you want to uh, customize it. But one of the biggest, um, you know, opportunities we see being leveraged on top of Apache Finrod is loans. Loans, either mortgage loans or it could be just, you know, merchant loans where somebody has a small business and they want to access, you know, financial services through loans. Um, the problem, again, if you go back to the, the credit scoring and to see the pattern predict predictability is extremely very hard because of the distributed way of how um, finances are actually, you know, running. So with the use of AI, there's quite a lot that could be done within the loan itself, from the origination to um, predicting whether some, you know, there's going to be uh, opportunity for somebody to be in distress. For example, they have a loan and you want to do restructuring. How can we tell um, ahead of time, based on the data that we have, um, an event that perhaps would, you know, bring somebody to default or they're in a stress? We had issues with COVID and lots of financial institutions and fintechs, you know, felt, I wish there was a way to predict, you know, such things. Um, could AI be the one that opens the floodgates. And this is something that I want to throw out there. Um, we have things to do with like moratorium, which is basically, you know, maybe stopping payments of interest and only paying principal or altogether pausing and so on. I, I wish there was a predictive way to do that. So it's an opportunity that we could all explore. And savings is also a very big part of um, what Finerat provides. And whether it is savings through a new bank, through wallet, through traditional banking, microfinance, SACOs, SACOs are like it's equivalent to cooperatives, you know, where you come together, you join effort, and, you know, you provide yourselves financial services. AI can play a big role in there, especially in trying to streamline um, the spending, but also the saving capabilities of the people actually that are being impacted. Um, one of them is like the budget analysis. Um, and in some of these things, like they're very basic in some places like, you know, Canada and, you know, US and so on. But the, the rest of the world is still like, you know, I'm, they're spending money in different sources, right? From mobile money to the cash, to the bank, their salaries, whatever, their wages that are coming in. So they can't, by the end of the month, an average person doesn't even know how much, you know, they've, they've spent, how much they've saved and so on. The high, one of the things that I think would be very useful in, when integrated is a way to help them with their budget analysis, personalized um, investment opportunities where, you know, there is a way to aggregate and curate and then share this information back to the customers, um, which can help them, you know, to improve their, their standard of living and so on. Um, recommendations on certain things that would be of interest, um, interest, you know, some institutions are running like floating interest, which is predominantly impacted by the economy of the country, you know, how the commercial bank, I mean, the, um, the national bank is, you know, driving things. It could be inflation and so on. So a common person is left at the discretion of certain small elites to make the decision on, you know, how things are going to either fluctuate, come down, or go up. These are things that would be really useful within a tool like Apache Finrod. Security is one of those things that is it's a hot topic, definitely. Interesting conversations we do have with um, stakeholders is always having to explain to them that open source does not mean insecure. 
um, because the word open is most of the times misinterpreted as it's for everybody, so anybody can jump in and do things, right? Um, so we, we try to explain our way around it. Um, and I think one of the things that would be really, really great is a more robust way to handle security, not just only in the code, but in infrastructure as well, but more predominantly a way to, we, we know that tools that can do that, right? You can you know, use tools like Sona and um, Codify and, and a bunch of others out there that can quickly configure and give you like your vulnerability measures. But um, more could be used to even give you more extensive um, way so that there's more security proof, security awareness, um, which also includes things to do with fraud and other things as well. And we see huge opportunity of AI helping in that area um, where it can actually add so much value to the tool. All right. Um, any questions? Any questions? And again, thank you for listening. Um, I, I wanted to have at least maybe 10, 15 minutes so we can perhaps you know, share ideas. Uh, I know um, some in the audience have, have, have interacted with you know, Apache Finrod. Um, some might be, this is the first time you're hearing about this tool. Um, all the same, I call this a beautiful accident. For some of you who came late, this was meant, meant to be under a FinTech truck. Um, somehow it ended under this truck, which is great. So um, I'm privileged to share with you that in the Apache ecosystem, there is one called Finerad, um, which is uh, a fintech-driven solution. Um, and we are in front of it, um, you know, trying to evangelize about it, telling different stakeholders um, the different use cases they can derive from it, whether they want to save life or they want to um, streamline their businesses, um, we are there helping. So um, thank you for giving me your ears and yes. Any other questions, any other comments? Yes. Uh, yeah, thanks for the talk, Robert. I know you left out, because you're only covering some of the use cases, but you left out, I think, a couple of the more obvious ones, like chatbots and yes. support. Yeah. Have you seen how that's been used in your practice yes. so far? Yes. Yeah, so, um, we do have a, a partner of ours in Colombia. This is before like the chat GPT thing came and was making wave. Um, we helped them with the implementation of their FINRA and then they were taking care of all the front-end developments, customer facing. What they built was integration with WhatsApp um, and other messaging engines. Um, Facebook Messenger was one of those. Um, uh, the, the one for China, WeChat, WeChat was there, WhatsApp was there, SMS, and they did a demo, this, this was a long time ago, I don't think any of my, my colleagues will remember, but um, where they would originate a loan through a WhatsApp. Um, you, you know, you, you, it just keeps giving you a prompt, um, and you're chatting, and then it does all the scoring for you, and then it says, okay, based on the information you've given me, this is how much we can give you. Um, that was really cool. And I've seen other use cases like Stripe. Stripe is one of those that actually integrated GPT, uh, GPT-4, um, for, for helping with the customer interactions and chatting as well, um, which I think was really cool. Um, so yeah, that use case def definitely is, is something that I consider. Um, just for the interest of time, I just wanted to highlight it for, yeah, let's. Interesting question to ask you here how we could avoid the bias in the situation. Because not that we end up like doctors and, and lawyers, yeah. because they're not giving access. Oh. Um, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't have an answer to that. It's like what you're saying is giving loan to like. Like the original idea, yeah. as you said, you know, financial inclusion. Yes. Right? And now we use a technology that might have some bias included yeah. that we cannot offer. 
they already included. Yeah. Which would be interesting because if you are, let's say you're running a, a small impactful microfinance somewhere in Nigeria and you are intended, um, you know, your, your intention is to impact the livelihood of, let's say, small businesses or empower women or empower small businesses to, to take up. Um, how do you then make sure somebody who's somebody like Alex who's already well off should not be able to take advantage of that, right? Would AI be a solution to say this is an Alex, this is a Steven? So Alex, you know, we love the idea that you would pay us in time, but our intention is not to give you um, the services. Maybe that would be something interesting to look at. Um, but I think definitely we were having conversation over lunch that. Sometimes people are using all this AI thing without even thinking, right? There's some thought that still needs to be invested. Because otherwise it's just gonna end up copying and pasting and who does that help? Nobody. Um, so context is also important and the use case, definitely the intention. Still somehow human beings will have to intervene at some point. Yes? Five minutes. Five minutes, yes. <laughs> all right, five minutes. Um, so. I have an opinion on inter inclusion, right? Inclusion is a very, I'm passionate about it because as I said, I've lived both worlds. I've lived in a world where um, de definitely they are excluded. And then I live in a world where you have access. And then I started rethinking the, the whole idea of inclusion. And I think it's, it's, it's a great mantra. This is a great narrative, like financial inclusion, 1.2 billion unbanked and so on. But when you go underneath and you pull the rugs, it's a whole different thing. Like, um, how do you include? I always say include, inclusion is in being invited to the table. There's a table, we want you to come and join us. The question is, um, where is the table? How do I find where the table is? Um, once I reach the table, do I have, can I say something? Am I just going to sit there at the table? You know, so, and now I'm thinking of more accessibility, you know, um, as the first step. You know, when people know where the table is and they are equipped enough to have a conversation at the table, then therefore they're included. Um, yeah, that's the sidebar. Anyway, thank you so much. If there's nothing else, I appreciate your time um, sitting here. We can always take this over, over a beer or, you know, over the floor. I think my time is up. And Nicholas, thank you. For, for this, um, yeah, thank you.